Good morning, friends. In 1968, the year before I was born, the economist and philosopher E.F. Schumacher was sightseeing in St. Petersburg, then known by its Soviet name of Leningrad. He had a map and was convinced he knew where he was. But as he stood on the street, he could see several large churches which were not marked on the map. He was disoriented. The map and the reality before him did not conform to each other. He asked his guide, who informed him that the atheistic Soviet maps did not show churches. In his last book, A Guide for the Perplexed, he used that to illustrate the way that a view of life which excludes God simply doesn't correspond to the reality of what we experience. Well, Psalm 119 is a perfect map. It corresponds to the reality of life as we actually experience it at God's hands and enables us to navigate it successfully by faith. Four pairs of verses today, chosen from four successive paragraphs in the psalm. We'll look at them one by one. And if you want to read the whole section from which they come afterwards, it's verses 81 through to 112. First, verse 81. Here is the honesty of the map. My soul faints with longing for your salvation, but I have put my hope in your word. The whole paragraph continues in that theme, but listen just to the next verse as well. My eyes fail looking for your promise. I say, when will you comfort me? This is yesterday's point. God's word is honest that faith is no inoculation against suffering. Rather, it warns us of its inevitability. Does that mean we are coldly stoic when it comes? Hardly. When he suffers, his soul faints and his eyes fail. So will ours. He longs and looks for salvation, hope, promise, comfort. So must we. We endure the cross because the crown is coming and the map of God's word is honest. We must share in Christ's sufferings if we will also share in his glory. Second, verses 89 and 91. The map was issued in its final edition. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. The word of God is just that, the word of God, the creator. If it were merely the word of men, the creature, it could only represent a small area of human experience and come from a limited historical time frame. And those who approach the Bible as if it were merely the work of men think just that, that it can only tell us what a Bronze Age tribe thought about God 3,000 years ago. That really doesn't interest very many people. But that's not what the psalmist says. Your word, he cries, is eternal. It's the word of the eternal God, not the people who believed in him. It doesn't need updating for the 21st century because the God of Abraham is the God of the Internet age. His word is eternal. His laws endure to this day. There is no need for an update. We can trust it absolutely, just as it is. Third, verses 98 and 99. The map is clear and you can read and follow it. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. The Bible is clear. You can understand it and apply it. John Wycliffe, the 14th century reformer, said, All Christian life is to be measured by scripture, by every word thereof. Because of that, he condemned the mighty friars and princely prelates for corrupting God's word and living indulgently in their own day. And it was God's unchanging word that made him wiser than his enemies and gave him more insight than his teachers and superiors. It's the same for us. If we have God's word, we have more insight than an Oxbridge Don, greater wisdom than the greatest sceptics of our age. That doesn't mean they'll recognise it. Years after he had died and been buried, the Pope ordered Wycliffe's body to be dug up and burned it didn't change anything. The Lord's commands still made him wiser than his enemies. And they will for us as well. Fourth, verses 105 and 111. 
Following this map brings security and joy. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. We walk through some dark places, not least because we so often have fainting souls and failing eyes. But the word of God is a lamp immediately in front of our feet on the path, keeping us from stumbling over what we face today. It's also a high beam light, picking out the path ahead through the long distant darkness and ensuring that we don't lose our bearings on the long journey of faith. And to heed the word of God is a joyful thing. The life obedient to God's word is your best life. It's the word of the eternal God that is preparing to take you into eternal life. The word of God is a perfect map to navigate life under God's blessing. It's honest about pain. It's perfect, a first and final edition. It's clear. You can hear God's voice right now and every day as you humble yourself beneath the scriptures. This is the path to eternal security and joy everlasting. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once more we pray that you would sanctify us by your word, for your word is truth. When our souls faint, renew our hope. Please humble us under your eternal word, and so grant us wisdom and insight, security and joy, as we seek to live and proclaim this word. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.